American traders. Pretty quiet European session here so far. Dollar yen printed a high up at 70. Nice pivot there. Now we're sort of testing the lows as equities get hit. We expect a little bit of a move here through 37. But I reiterate, uh, we do not think this is going to get below 112.15. One and we are going to be trying to pick up cheap dollars here between uh, 112.15 and 112.35 for an eventual move back higher today. Equities are throwing a bit of a wrench into this. Bonds are up at 124.95, but we don't expect this to last. So this is our plan for today to accumulate dollars in this sort of attempted gap fill. We'll go to dollar Swiss. Same type of chart, but much, much further from the gap fill. We want to be patient here and try and get dollars. We said earlier today you want to get dollars uh, below 98.50. We'll take some here at 40. We'll probably take some again around 15. We'll use this 200-day um, moving average as support. Comes in at basically 98 to figure and we are looking for this to hold what else NASDAQ is getting torched down half a percent 62.33 at the moment uh, this is now down through yesterday's low and also we're touching on the November 14th lows so this is not looking too good, the NASDAQ. Short side of this is recommended today. Let's go to the S&Ps. Sort of the same chart, but not quite as violent. Have not made a new low below 33 yet. We got some initial shorts out at 43, but we did not get paid at 48. Um, we're just going to be patient here. There should be some wash today. I don't think this is going to be a straight line. The NASDAQ does not look good. Got to say that. Let's go to cable just because it's insane. We had a big move down this morning through 20 all the way down to 70 and then a move back up to 30. And now we're sitting here at 11. Lots of comments from Northern Ireland. Some comments from Hammond, some comments from the EU Commission, comments everywhere, driving it left, driving it right. Hit and run is the way to trade cable these days. Watch their news feeds and hit and run. If this deal somehow goes through, we're going to break 134.50 this week. I mean 135.50 this week. Uh, as unlikely as that sounds that could happen and of course if the deal totally falls through we have a lot more ways to go down we could easily get down to 130 so watch your headlines the technicals are not really in play in cable it's just a headline headline play I want to look at gold here we've been looking at it the last couple of days we've been in sort of this sideways motion here yesterday we called it sort of the Bart Simpson or the Homer Simpson head and shoulders whatever you want to call it prices and this is cash gold prices through 1271 and a quarter should lead to lower uh, this fits in with our whole bonds lower rates higher that we're expecting over the next sort of 10 days as we iron out the final details of this tax bill Again, the story is basically repatriation is going to cause fixed income selling, which is going to cause higher rates, which then leads to higher dollar. This combined with sort of the phantom idea that repatriation is going to lead to loads of currency exchange into dollars. I don't really think that is true, um, but I think the market thinks that's true, so this will also help the dollar. So we're just being patient here. We want price to confirm story. So we're just going to wait for that 1271 and a quarter area. What else is out there? 
Um, Euro dollar. The gap fill there is 90. Getting pretty close. 78, the high today. There's definitely going to be some stops here. Uh, New Yorkers are going to try and break trade this through 78. I'm very, very skeptical. If you do break trade it, be extremely disciplined. I think Euro is a sell. Fits in with the dollar buy. But it's really the third best option. Best option being dollar Swiss. Second best option, dollar yen. The third best option is Euro dollar. So, in general, we're just kind of leaving Euro dollar alone for now. Finally, let's look at Aussie. We've been trying to get short Aussie the past couple of days. That has not worked out too well. Turn it up to 54 after the RBA it was mildly hawkish. I don't think there's much to do up here. We don't want to beat a dead horse with our short bias. We would like to see more confirmation of left-hand side price action before we get back in. So We're not definitely turning to on the long side. We're just going to wait uh, and see how things go. Oh, and lastly, let's take a look at dollar turkey just because it's moving a lot. Yesterday we had this mysterious breakthrough, 389, traded all the way down to 383.90 today. If you believe we're going to get a little bit of sideways movement here the next couple days, this is then going to become a neckline, 383.90, which, if it does break, uh, a lot of clean air down there. I have no idea why it would break. I don't have no idea why you would want to own Turkish Lira with all the political BS that's going on and what we think are dollar rates going higher. But something to watch. 383.90 is the level to watch. Put it in your books. Put it on the radar. See how we do. All right. That's it for now. I will uh, hand it over to our esteemed clients to trade and... Our team in North America to update you on the Asian clothes. Have a good session. Talk to you soon. Ciao.